part two. Uh, I've got a time limit on my on my uh, cell phone on how long I can record. So here's a quick quick overview of some of the objects here in the Pinstrument. Uh, clocks. Uh, I was going to assign one of these clocks to. Let's try it. Nope. I want to make it like fast. All right. I'm going to assign this to channel A. This is internal routing again. All the letters represent internal routing in the Pinstrument. So I'm going to go back down here to the Turing Machine. If you haven't experienced a Turing Machine, you, de you should definitely try it out. Um, this is going to listen on channel A. Uh, I need to turn on my clocks, it looks like. Oops. I'm hitting a menu at the top. All right. Clocks. There we go. Got our clocks running. Back to the Turing machine. A Turing machine works by having a series of bits um, and cycling through them. If I understand it correctly, if if I understand it correctly, I've built a, a Turing machine correctly. If I don't, then I've built it incorrectly. But it's mine has a series of bits. You can set the length that you want to repeat, um, and it reads through these bits, cycling through them and giving you a value. And I use that to generate maybe a tone. Right? I can generate um, within a range. Um, and I can also divide up that range by an arbitrary number of steps. And if I want to quantize it to the equal tempered scale, I got a little toggle for that. It can tell you what the note number is too down here. You can see the note number, which is kind of high. Um, the random setting allows me to set the chance that the current bit that's selected will flip from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. And then I've got ways of automating some of these processes if I take in a signal. So I'm going to send this to... Um, to 1, and I'm going to take the output of 1 that was plugged into audio output, and instead I'm going to plug that into an oscillator that can generate some sound, and patch that out. This is the Duranalog Generate 3. It's going to take its nice dirty sine wave out. Oh, it's been, uh, there we go, there we go, that's good. I like, I, I like Turing machines more than I like sequencers, step sequencers, because I don't have to adjust them and they automatically just give me interesting uh, collections of notes. If you send this through a quantizer, you know, and select the notes you want on the quantizer, you know, you can get something even more, maybe tonal, if that's what you're looking for. If I just wanted to have a, just a few notes selected out of it, I can quantize it to six different steps. I can turn off equal temper quantization, and then we're microtonal. All right, so that's a that's a Turing machine. Uh, we've got a phase sequencer too. So if you like step sequencers, this isn't a step sequencer, not necessarily. Um, I guess you could treat it like one, but let me explain how it works. You you can set um, pitch values um, to a specific octave. All right, this is something I couldn't find a lot of Eurorack modules that would do it like this. And you can set it to a particular octave. I guess you need a tracker for this. Um, Set it to a particular octave. You set the number of steps you want it to read through. So if, just, if you just want the top row, you can set it to six. Then you use a CV select, and that takes in a control voltage, and that voltage will read through, it'll move through these selected six notes, and the trigger will then grab whatever note is currently selected. Um, so if you've got a trigger that's moving really fast, it'll just keep going back and forth between these notes. If you did a triangle wave, it would just read back and forth through them. Uh, if you did a, a sawtooth, you know, you could have it ramp up and it would just start back over and come back down, right? And the trigger would just be grabbing whatever the current note is selected. Output will send the output. It's, um, I haven't used this one as much because uh, it takes a lot of thought to think about what notes you want. And uh, Turing Machine <laughs> makes it so I don't have to think. Uh, there's a wave folder. This takes an audio input, um, a fold CV, and an amplitude CV. Um, you can adjust how much the frequent, the fold CV and the amplitude CV affect the uh, signal, and you can set like your center fold amount and amplitude amount. There's even a slew.
for controlling the rate of change from one fold value to the next and rate, uh, amp to the next. And I've got two outputs here. Um, for a while I thought a lot of these objects should have multiple outputs so it would be easy to maybe send something as a control value and as, as a signal or, or, you know, being able to duplicate is useful. Um, I don't know, it, it's, it's remained. I've got a VCA panner. So this is a voltage control amplifier, right? Four channels, so you can take an input, you can use a CV and attenuate the amount of the CV um, to send it out this first outlet here. Each one of these has an outlet. So it just operates as a VCA. The right outlet is the opposite of the CV. So if the CV is low, then the CV will be high for the right outlet. So you can, you can pan something left and right, right? Um, if, you, if you want to use both outlets. Plus, this is a mixer. It mixes all four channels, uh, all left channels down to the left mix, and all right channels down to the right mix. So, handy little object. And then we, we're back to this uh, quad cosine object that has four sine wave generators, uh, where you can set the range in octaves, and set a octave offset, and also set a step offset, so you can get a very specific range of pitches that you want to come out. And you can also quantize these quantize the frequency CV to a um, uh, equal tempered scale. All right, that takes us through all of these objects. Um, I don't know if that answers everyone's questions, but you know, the, the, the whole thing about PD is that you can just download it, install it, and try it out. And if you don't like something it's doing, you can change the code. And I've left the license open for that. So feel free to, to grab it, fork it, make changes to it, suggest changes to me. And uh, we can we can make this a living project that people can incorporate well into their Euro rack setups, but also just to use on a computer if you want to. Uh, I, I I think this is worth studying because it shows a lot of tricks that I've learned in Pure Data over the years to make interface design usable uh, for um, routing signals around through a patch without needing to use patch cables, um, making a touchscreen interface. You know, I feel pretty good about some of these um, aspects of it. There's some limitations uh, running this on a Pi. I couldn't make a um, an oscilloscope that could run well and still have the audio work without dropping out. I don't know if there are some tricks to that that you might know about. You can share those with me in the comments. Um, but I'm uh, opening this up to the world. Um, I. Yeah, the, another thing that this could be improved with is, are some state saving mechanisms. So you could save your current uh, patch and then you could um, reload it whenever you want to. Uh, I've done some programming on other software that does that. So I know how to do it. I also know that it's pretty clunky in Pure Data. So it, it would take a lot of work for me to, to make all of these objects behave that way. And it also creates overhead for creating new objects because then they also have to have that same type of code. Um, but Please feel free to take a look at this, um, enjoy it, and uh, let me know if you're using it in a project or for a performance. Yeah, thanks a lot for watching.